I'm ready to be out of here. You know, I when I hear about all the perversion and darkness in this world, I just don't want to stay any longer, you know? But I don't want to have Jesus return just to escape something. Okay, even though he said, pray that you escape all these things in the book of Luke. I want to see him. I want to be with him, which reminds me of a conversation I had with a brother from this fellowship yesterday. Okay? And it's just talking about how do we spend our time? We know we're right up against the rapture. Are we still concerned about having fun? Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun. Is it all about your pleasures? Is it all about, you know, and I don't want to name things, but is it all about you? It can't be at this point. If you can't wake up at this point, I don't think you can wake up. It needs to be 100% full blast for Jesus. And you guys know from day one, that's what I've talked about, right? 100%. Now, I'm still working on it. I'm not scolding anybody. But we need to go all out for our Savior. I think, I don't want to shrink away in shame when I see just the nail-scarred hands and the whipping he took when I first see him. And I'm sure that's what I'll see. And then, meanwhile, I was out, um, and there's nothing wrong with going on vacation, but suppose I'm out on vacation, I'm at Disneyland or whatever, and I could care less about him. You see what I'm saying? Again, not a guilt trip. It's just that let's go full blast. In Ezekiel 4. Ezekiel 4. And we're going to see, and this, you could say, well, that's contrived. Well, maybe, maybe not. But did God encode a date in there? Yeah. Well, let's see. Four, one through five. And let's go through that prophecy. Two different prophecies. And we'll see how precise we can be. And then we're going to add them up and see if they land on any certain date. Like, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so Ezekiel 4, 1 through 5. So we have this, this prophecy where Ezekiel goes out and lays on his side. Okay. And it's a day for the year concept. We talked a lot about that. And this is one of the places that appears. Uh, where else is a day for a year? Here. I mean, just off the top of my head, how long do they spy out the land? How many days? Yeah. And how many years were they in the wilderness? And God explicitly says, hey, it's a year for a day. Or, or, yeah, a year for a day. So now we're going to see in verse two and lay siege against them. He's to portray this thing that's going to happen. And he's talking about a siege that's going to happen. So we have to start the count at a siege. Okay, now here's what the deal is in 701 BC is when that siege was, okay, and that was the Assyrian siege, okay, the Assyrians came in and they lay siege to a Jerusalem, okay, and that was in 701 BC. Now, um, he's going to lay on his side for how long? Days. days, which would be years, representing years, right? Yeah. Okay, that's plain enough. Now, um, in Leviticus 26, 18, 26, 18, God says this, for I've laid up, um, and if you will not for all this hearken unto me, he gives a principle. I will punish you seven more times for your sins. He's going to put a seven multiplier in there. Okay. So if we do that 390, because they were disobedient continually, and then you times it by seven, you get 2,730 years. 
all right? He's going to punish them for 2,730 years. Now, here's a strange thing. If you take the 200, 2,730, you minus, because it's on the BC side, 701 year. Okay? And then there's no year zero. So to compensate for that, you add one year. Okay? What year do you come out on the AD side? The punishment's going to be over in 2030. Now, let's look at the second half of the prophecy and see what that says. So, Ezekiel chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. So, the question is, when does that start? It takes about 40 days. So, is there a 40-year period that we can pin down? Okay, that's exact. 30 AD Just coincidentally, A.D. to 70 A.D. is exactly 40 years. And you know what? Get this. It's 40 years to the day. Wow. What day was Jesus crucified? Passover, right? And then what day did the Romans start their siege in 70 A.D.? Passover. Passover. Exactly a 40-year period. That's Again, just another coincidence. So let's, let's use that 40 year period, okay? Um, and then what we're gonna do is, okay, so that is equal that the 40 years of judgment in 70 AD, okay, plus, oh, this is really awkward for me, 280 years. Now, you know where that 280 comes from? It's 40 years times that 7 multiplier. So that brings you to what? 350 AD. All right. So then let's go from 350 AD. Did they repent in 350 AD? No, they didn't repent. Okay, so now at this point, it's plus 1,680 years. Okay, now why that? Because 280 times what? 7 equals 1,960, which is really, remind me to go back to that day, that, that year. Somebody should be able to say, that's 1,960. That, that couldn't be, okay? Hopefully, if you guys have been listening. Okay? Now, <laughs> so um, minus 280, because they already served the 280, okay? So when you add up those two years, that date with that amount of years, what do you come out to? Coincidentally... The punishment ends in both prophecies in 2030. Now that's pretty astounding. Now let's look at this right here. 960 years, why would that be important? Because God dealt with Israel in four periods of what? 770s, so or 490 years. And we talked about that 1,009. Then we even took that, okay, and went forward with that one, right? Remind us again of the four 490. I'm sorry? Remind us again of the four 
Yes. Well, the last period, well, 70 times 7 is 490, right? The last period that God dealt with Israel was in the 70 weeks prophecy. But if you go through, and I, I documented it, and I gave you guys a handout, he actually dealt with them with three other periods of 400 or 770s. Three other periods of 490 years. God's very exacting, right? And then we did something weird. That is equal to, 1, I didn't plan to do this, 1,960 years. And when was the dispersion and the final judgment on Israel? 70 AD. What if you add 1,960 years? What do you come out to? 2030. A lot of stuff ends up there. Now, again, I don't know the exact cycles, um, but that's a lot of suspicious stuff to me. A lot of suspicious stuff. And then we talked about the Jewish writings. They said for 40 years this happened, for 40 years that happened. That all indicated the Levitical system was done. And they said from the great destruction, before that, for 40 years, the lot came up in the wrong hand. The ribbon didn't turn wide on and on. Well, for 70 AD, that takes you back to 30 AD. So again, uh, I'm putting my money on there. Now, when I was talking to Mark Kirk, he actually said something kind of that made me think a little bit. I know, and I'll throw this at you. What if the final, the 70 AD is when when Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. But who held out to 72 AD? Masada. Masada. So that could put 32 as the crucifixion. And it could be that that points now to 3032. Uh, and it could be that points to a rapture year as 2025. Could be. All right, so that's, again, possibilities, and we know it's all wrong because, okay, thank you. No man knows the day or the hour. Oh, my gosh. If I have to deal with that one, one more time, that's why I spent six months on that one verse, right? Ad nauseum, and it's all documented on YouTube. No man knows the day or the hour. I don't want to ever hear that verse again. 